Welcome to At The Vanguard. We're TB Vanguard, and our motto is for fans, by fans. We showcase fans on the front line of the Team Breezy movement. This podcast is an open forum to discuss current topics as they relate to Chris Brown and his fan base. We're talking about a few things, but the first thing um, we wanted to let everybody know is that Chris's team actually reached out to us. They've been listening to the podcast. They told us that they listened to um, podcast number 16, where we talked about title and streaming and ideas of that nature. And um, they enjoyed the podcast. They enjoyed our ideas. And so we just wanted to let everybody know that they are listening. That's pretty cool, actually. Wow, that is awesome. Yeah, yeah. Um... One of the first things that we're, I guess we're kicking off talking about is the pre-order of Heartbreak on a Full Moon that the pre-order came out. The link, I guess, came out yesterday. So have you um, been able to pre-order yet? I did. I, um, matter of fact, I pre-ordered the, both versions, clean, explicit, um, and that's usually what I do anyway. I get Whatever they offering, that's what I, I get it all. So I was able to um, get the pre order. Cool. cool. Is there a specific um, site that you're using? Um, I'm on iTunes. Um, okay. So I, that's that's my number one digital place. Um, as far as it, you know, when it comes to buying music, so um, that's where I get my music from is iTunes. So. Okay. I was just telling uh, Paula a little while ago that I'm running out of space on my electronic devices, so I don't know if I'll be able to get it on iTunes, but I'm definitely, I know, right? It's ridiculous. But I'm definitely, because I have some of his other ones on there, I'm definitely going to get it on uh, a hard copy. I usually buy several hard copies anyway, because I like to have the hard copy, and I like the pictures and things like that, too. Um, So I'll definitely be doing that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I do the same thing. I get the hard copy just, you know, because I mm-hmm. feel like it's about to be a lost art. <laughs> yeah. there is, I don't know, at some point, they might not even have CDs. I mean, yeah. I, don't, I don't know. So I just figure, you know, plus just, yeah. you know, I Definitely. figure if you took the time to put it out there like that, then, you know, maybe we should, you know, we should support that as well. So. Yeah, I agree. I definitely agree with that. I wonder if he's going to do like a vinyl though. A lot of artists are putting, you know, they're putting out vinyls too. Um, yeah. I'd be interested if he would Right. I'm sorry. No, you're fine. You're fine. Yeah, but I don't. Um, you saw a vinyl set, you said? No, no not for him. I said, I, but I've okay. seen artists' vinyl sets. So yeah. uh, it would be interesting to see if he would do it. I think he should. That would be pretty cool. But well, I guess we'll definitely see. But um, sure. yeah, I, I, re- I did the pre-order too, but I see that later on that, that you can see the actual songs now. I saw that people were posting them and I did see the actual songs. Did you notice that? Sam? Yeah, I did. Yeah, okay. I did. I, um, I was able to see the full track listing. And the only thing about iTunes, man, I, I even seen like with the X album and no, it wasn't Royalty, but I know with the X album, it was like up until the day and then he switched yeah. out a song. So, you know, I just, yeah. you know, I guess it's yeah. tentative. You just never know. But yeah, I did get to see the track listing. I'm excited. Um, yeah. I'm very excited, but I, I, I am one of those people, I guess, um, I'm waiting for uh, if he will give us a video of a of, of a ballad or something. I know what's selling. I get it, all that. <laughs> but I am waiting for a pure, uh, uh, just a pure R&B song where he is singing, singing. Yeah, I like when he does that too. I totally yeah. agree. Yeah. We'll see if it happens, it was, uh, yeah, every video has been a uh, dance video so far, but. Yeah, I'd love to hear him just belt out a song on a ballad in a video. And especially Heartbreak on a Full Moon, the, the title song, which I, even though I've only heard a clip, I'm already in love with it. That'd be pretty cool. Maybe he'll listen. 
you know, maybe somebody will listen. Hint, hint. And uh, <laughs> actually, they're listening right. They're gonna probably be listening right now, Nikki. Right. Because that's we want every time vinyl. you say something. Yeah, every time you see something, they turn around and then it's like, oh wait, they got they're doing this <laughs> idea. They're doing that idea. So maybe we'll have a vinyl collection. Thanks, Tim. <laughs> yes, yes, vinyl in a ballad. You know, just you know, no pressure. Just putting it out there. Right. Right. Um, exactly. Just putting it out there. Yeah. Uh, D, is there any um, particular pre-order site that you're or service that you're going through, or you come yeah, here? Yeah, I signed up for a title. Um, okay, and so I'm going to be doing the streaming, and then I went ahead and pre-ordered on um, iTunes, but I'm still going to go to Amazon and get a physical copy. And I'm hoping Chris is going to do like he did last time, where Amazon had. Actually, no, it was Walmart that had, uh, you could get a copy of the album, but you had to buy it from Walmart. So I'm hoping he's going to do something like that as well. Oh, yeah, he's just, I remember. Yeah, I remember. Hello, that. everybody. Hi. Hi, it's Tammy. Hey, Tammy. Hey. How are you? Pretty good. Pretty good. Great, great, great. Yeah. So we were just uh, talking about the pre-order, you know, yesterday, Heartbreak on a Full Moon came out for pre-order and we were just discussing the different services we were using to, um, to pre-order the album. So did you, get a, did you get a chance to pre-order yet or are you still looking to do that? Yeah, I did. I pre-ordered on um, Amazon. Okay. Yeah, because I uh, subscribe to Apple, so, you know, I just... I uh, pre-ordered on Amazon, so now I can stream on both now. <laughs> cool. Yeah. Well, the one thing I did start out saying, I don't know, you might have heard, but I think Paula said you were in the request room that the um, I was letting CM know that Chris's team had reached out reached out to us and told us that they um. listened to yeah that they listened to the. He was podcast 16 and enjoyed hearing our ideas about uh streaming and title and the whole um upcoming benefit concert and all of that which actually brings us to our next topic um the title concert that's going on on tuesday is anybody actually able to go to the title concert mm-hmm. no i don't i don't get tickets yeah are they still, do they still have tickets or is it sold out now? Yeah, Sade said that they sold out. They, all they have now is resale. And of course, you have to be careful with resales anyway. Yeah. 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 We did have a question for CM. CM, do you know whether the uh, the uh, concerts will be uh, open to everyone on streaming or just these title subscribers? Well, all they said was that it was a title exclusive, which, you know, um, I, that doesn't tell me if it's still, if it's going to be open for everyone, though. Um, I would assume so because they're asking for donations. Um, and I would think that you would want to get that from any and everybody who's willing, you know, to donate, um, you know, to the cause or whatever. So, um, but it doesn't, it didn't say, I looked, it didn't say, um, clearly, you know, if you, if anybody would be able to watch it without being subscribed, it just said that it was an exclusive. That's it. Okay. Streamed okay. exclusively, untitled. So, but I But you guys a- did see, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. Well, I was going to ask you a question, which was more along the lines of title, but I want to go ahead and okay. hear your point that you were going to say. Go ahead. Well, I was just going to say, um, you guys recognize that they made sure to um, promote his his new single and video. <laughs> yes. Oh. Yeah. They they which I assumed they would, but it was good seeing that they actually did it. Um. But yeah. So. Where I mean, where I mean, where did they, they did it on um on, on Twitter. Twitter? Yeah. Oh, that's cool. We retweeted it. Yeah, we we retweeted it. Um, I'm going to bring up the tweet. You can can you see my screen? I'll be on the phone. Yes, you may not be able to see it, but um, yeah, they tweeted it. 
Here it is. It says, uh, title, title high five. Flex on your haters with Chris Brown's new stunt and anthem, High End, featuring Future and Young Thug. And in the big photo there. So that's that's a big deal. That is a big deal. That is. Yeah. 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 Well, you would, you would hope that they would, you know, support and promote. I mean, he's on their their concert. He's at their concert performing exactly. or will be. So can't have him there and not, you know, well, you shouldn't have him there and not promote. Well, you not. should, yeah. Yeah, you should. <laughs> that 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 doesn't make any sense. But I I, I believe yeah. we're going to see a little bit more of it. Um, I think this is kind of just the beginning. Um, just because of some other things that's happening, but I don't know how it's all going to work together. So when I, if the person, I guess you know, I, with the OHB Sports and stuff like that. Um, it's so much more that's going on with that, and so I'm just waiting to see how all this stuff pans out. Mm -hmm. I've been waiting for this for so long, <laughs> and um, <laughs> and I knew it was coming, but it, like, you know, I you know nobody can really say until it's out, and so you're just kind of waiting. And I'm watching him more and more build that brand, so I'm I'm very um, interested to see. And especially how it's all going to work together. So I think you're going to see a lot more. Um, uh, what am I saying? Like um, integration, title, uh, all that stuff. Um, when mm -hmm. it comes down to Chris. Okay. Well, hopefully. It looks like uh, it. Oh. No. Yeah. I, I did too. I'm sorry, Nikki. I, I don't want to interrupt you too much, but I because um, we don't we do want your input. But I wanted to show y'all. The promotion we wanted to do for streaming on uh, the day of the concert. We're going to do is uh, stream Breezy in Brooklyn and also a hashtag title X Brooklyn the, the, to piggyback off it because we want to try to trend it, you know, because it hasn't been working out so much lately. So that's our that's our effort, one of our efforts towards uh, streaming for him the day of the concert. Okay, now back to you. Sorry, just wanted to stick that in. Oh, no worries. That's fine. That's totally fine. Um, Paula, was there something specific um, that you wanted to cover with the title concert? Um, we hope to stream it um, on on uh, on uh, Instagram Live, but I'm not sh positive we can. Uh, CM, do you know if that's allowed? I I I want to subscribe and. Uh, stream the concert on our Instagram live. Would that be, do you know if that's possible or allowed? Well, I mean, technically, if you're streaming it um, from their stream, then, you know, technically that's not <laughs> legal, but. Oh, okay. <laughs> can you do it? I'm, I'm sure there's ways, but um, I don't know anything about Instagram live being able to do it that way, so. Okay. I definitely wouldn't know. <laughs> we'll we'll see what we can yeah. do that day. <laughs> okay, <laughs> maybe just his performance. Yeah. I think we're not trying to do too many. Y'all know, like yeah. he Don't definitely be will be trending. He will already be trending. Well, definitely when he hit the stage, he's going to be trending. Yeah. Um, because you know, like anytime it's a concert like that, um, people are watching it on Twitter. Normally, right when people are performing, that's when the trend starts. So like that that's like a clear cut time to really make sure that um you know you the hashtags and stuff match and then it could get him possibly to number one so just just make sure we put that out there because the world will be trending his performance anyway right i appreciate your insights about that so who was able to um I forgot the question that I was, was going to that. No, I didn't. I remember. I'm sorry. <laughs> See, um, as for as far as title and like streaming and things, I do have a free title subscription or at least for six the next six months. And I'm not really sure how to use it. Is it is it user friendly? Like if I wanted to obviously watch the concert on Tuesday, is it pretty user friendly yeah, very, to be able to do that? Okay. To me it's very user friendly. It is um 
Um, I make my playlist over there. Um, I, I stream from over there a lot, but I also stream from Apple Music. But um, it's, it's very user friendly. Like when the concert happens, it's going to be on the main page. So even whether you open yeah. your phone or your computer, or whatever, it's going to be the first thing that pops up. And all you have to do is click it, and it'll start. So it won't be um, oh. it won't be difficult at all. Awesome, awesome. Okay. Who saw the Friday the Thirteenth video for High End? I did. I did. <laughs> yes. I liked Thanks. it. It was it was really good. It was really good. I liked the video. Was it what you, you know, I thought of you. I thought of Tammy. Well, I thought of Tammy when when the video came on because I know this is what <laughs> I want Tammy to talk about because she said in one of the podcasts which we know they listen to. Oh, he needs to step it up, and I want to see some special effects, and I want to see some high end. So, Terry, tell us what you really think about that video. <laughs> I like it. It had a lot of special effects at the beginning, and it was like different sceneries. And I think he answered my question because before I said, you know, he always has dark videos, and I was thinking, you know, Chris is a vampire, so he is a vampire. And he looked like the um, vampire from Act, um, from the movie Salem's Lot. I don't know if any of you ever seen it. But he looked like that vampire <laughs> when I first seen it. It scared me at first. Oh, oh my it's God. But it was really good. Yeah, very scary. So I was like, oh my goodness. But it was really good. I like I'm sorry? No, I said when he was laying down in the coffin and getting up, he reminded me of the Lost Boys for some reason. I have no reason. Yeah, the Lost Boys. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. The Lost Boys too, and uh, um, Salem's Lot. That's like an older horror movie. But that, the um, vampire in Salem's Lot with them eyes, he looked, that's, and I was like, he must have seen Salem's Lot. <laughs> But it was really good. The special effects and the different sceneries, like future in a car, you know, driving. And it was still like they was kind of ghosts. Like, you know, they was ghost driving um, and um, with um, Young Thug and then Tiana Taylor, Trey Song. Fabulous. Because at first I was like, is that fabulous? Is that Tiana Taylor? And then he had the uh, credits come down at the end because, you know, you really couldn't see him really good. It was just like, you know, they flashed across the stream, just like, you know, you, they face was shown for like a minute and then it was gone. So I was like, is that Tiana Lucas? And I had to re I had once watched it again just to, you know, see if it was Tiana. So it was really good. I liked the um, video and it was on Friday the 13th. And that was, that was really cool. But I thought that, um, I don't know. Remember the other video that we saw, Freaky Friday? I think it was like, I think that's what he was saying, right? Um, mm -hmm. I believe uh, probably someone that was on the street when he was uh, doing the video, video recorded it and put it on his in IG. Yeah, oh. I remember that. I remember, yeah. yes. Yeah. I don't see it on the album. I was like, I like like this song. I didn't see it on the, on the um, track list. I was well, like, you never oh, know. You never you know. Change, yeah. Then I probably changed the name, maybe. Yeah, I was thinking they may not yeah. have used that name. They may have used a different name for it. I hope so, because I, I really like that song. I really would like to hear it, um, and hear it in its entirety. I really like it. From what I heard. <laughs> but I think that the, the video is sort of like, you know how we kept talking about wanting something like a thriller 2.0. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, we want it by the end of the year. We want it by, I mean, by the end of the month. We want it for Halloween. And, it, and Chris came through with it. But um, it's going to probably be, because it's getting over 2 million a day. So it might end up being the equivalent of Pills and Automobiles surprising everybody with, you know, not only uh, people loving it, but people loving the video. I was, I'm not surprised that the video is doing really well, um, but we did see that it's jumped up on the iTunes charts and it's only been out going on the second day. So that's a pretty good sign. But then a lot of people like the song too. Yeah. Yeah. Plus, I mean, I'm not even a Young Thug fan, but Paula, what was your favorite part? 
Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I, well, I like the 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 you know it's like the a little bit of a thriller and it doesn't look exactly like it but in the sense that the, you can see the demons dancing like it takes a little bit of the scariness away because it's really like ghoulish but um but i love the dancing in it and um it's it, but it's like a movie just like you get credits at yeah. the end and all that so it's like a little movie it's the length of the song it's okay. a long like thriller but it's but it's, it's like a little mini movie it's pretty cool like a, a modern day thriller, right? Right. <laughs> okay. And also, oh. Chris is getting rappers to dance and you know <laughs> step outside of the box. With <laughs> I don't think Future really um, made his face up, but he well, he he got him dancing though. And Young Thug, he did. He had a, um, his face all done up, um, looking like some kind of vampire. Or, Ghoul or something, <laughs> and um, <laughs> that was that was cool because that's what people were saying. It was like Chris got um, Future and Young Thug dancing. <laughs> <laughs> wow. All kinds of funny, all kinds of funny. Wow. Was Future was Future actually on set? Because when I every time I think about it, I'm looking at him. It's like a hologram. That's what it reminds me of. I thought he was a ghost scene. or Even, something. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I think he, like he he a, was a like ghost. A hologram. Yeah, he was a ghost. I think he was a ghost in the um video. That was his uh his makeup. Oh. He played the ghost. <laughs> he didn't do <laughs> the face that he was just a ghost. Okay. Okay. Because you know when he, it first started in the car. Go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. Because, um, when it first started, when he was in the car, him and the uh, the lady that was in the car, they were ghosts. Right. So when it first started, I was like, okay, I see some special effects here. And then, you know, they started, they kept flashing. That reminded me of Harlem Nights, the um, city with the moon. The, oh, yeah. The, the full moon. <laughs> so it was, I like, it was really good. I like. And I keep watching well, it. And I think a lot of people are doing that. Go ahead, see him. Like I, yeah, you, I said, you guys know I'm, I'm more of the R&B stuff, but this video, the video, <laughs> I was just like, this is him. This is him right mm -hmm. here. This is the perfect time for this type of video. I really believe the fact that, you know, he put it out on Friday the 13th, of course, that helps. But what I love about the timing is when that album drops, and the fact that it's, you know, Halloween, it just fits. And I, I expect the numbers on the actual video to just explode, even on that one day. Because it's like, that's a day that you definitely look at high-end video and you promote yeah. that video. Because right, it's already right. that time of year, you know, it's Halloween, it's that type of video. So you just push that thing out there, stream high-end, stream high-end, because, you know, it just goes with, the day so i think you know i hope that they kind of put it out there like that on um, it's gonna be so much happening you know once the album drops anyway but we already have a video kind of you know what i mean like it's for mm -hmm. that for that day so we have a video for it so right yeah i don't know i just look at everything from the from that standpoint of how can he get the biggest impact for dropping on halloween Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, you're looking at the big picture. Right. Like the, I don't know. I don't, I feel like you don't even have to push too much on Halloween to get people to watch that video because it's it goes with the thing. It's you know yeah. what I mean. So it's yeah. like um, it's kind of like an easy streaming day almost, getting people to watch it and stuff like that. Yeah, Plus, I think, I think like Chris's red hair is like I don't know if you guys saw the pictures from the stylist who yeah. dyed his hair red tips. It looks really, really good. And you know, I was hoping I think it was Sin, wasn't it, Paula? Who told us that she saw some, she saw uh, them actually filming the video. Yeah, she did. She didn't know what the video was, but she right. said that Young Thug and Future were on the set, and she said it seemed like kind of halloweenish thing so um 
And she told us that about three weeks ago, wasn't it? Something like that. Three yeah, something ago. like that. Yeah. yeah, I think that was Charday. Yeah, it was really, really good. I know a lot of people are gonna wanna get that face crotash for Halloween. <laughs> like oh, they should make yeah. that, like a mask or something, you know? Yeah, but those Maybe. eyes. Oh my goodness. Wow, you know that would be great. Like if he could yeah. make up a few of those things and and man you could like put it on his site and just sell it exclusively yeah like for, mm -hmm. for the next week or so you know say hey only a hundred of these you know Chris, whatever i don't know however you man look anyway i'm sorry that would be a great idea because i know people <laughs> will buy it they would definitely absolutely. buy that absolutely they do that with him anyway you know they uh try to especially for halloween they try to do, remember we had all those uh, loyal people dressed up as the uh, when he did loyal the loyal costume. So I'm quite sure they'll go do that definitely. They still wear his do his B B T outfit for Halloween. So <laughs> yeah, there are lots of people who dress up as Chris. So yeah, I think this one. I think the video is going to be played every Halloween from now on. I think it's going to be a classic in that sense. And I think a lot of mm -hmm. people are going to be doing that makeup or attempting that makeup, for sure. And again, we're going to do what we always do, which is the Halloween contest, huh, Paula? It's oh, yeah. The Disney inspired costume. So we'll be doing, kicking that off. Because um, Halloween, I don't know if they're going to celebrate the weekend before for the kids and then actually celebrate the day of. But we'll make sure we do the um, Breezy inspired Halloween costume contest. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we got to make sure we I'll be definitely. That. Yeah, definitely be looking for it uh, probably a week before. So I know everybody, you know, everybody's neighborhood and county is so different. Ours, the county, I think, celebrates it the, like, the last Sunday of the month or close to the last Sunday of the month. And then, mm -hmm. like, each neighborhood sometimes would, like, we do our own thing. We do ours at night in my neighborhood, but, and it's usually on Halloween or the Thursday. But it's, you know, it just depends. So, I think if we try a week before, we might catch all the different things that people are doing. Yeah. Which is soon, so. And I think, is, is it is that like the, because uh, Chris verse really made it like, um, like a, a real Halloween, you know, type of song because he started saying, we vampires, we don't go to sleep or something, you know. And um, yeah. so is that's like, I've never seen, I don't know, I'm not sure, but it seems like that's the first like rap song or trap song or trap Halloween song <laughs> that they have. So that's interesting too. Yeah. Like mostly we see singers, you know, they have Halloween songs or they do Halloween videos, but this is the first time we see actual Future and um, Young Thug who are rappers or trappers or whatever. And um, in a video or a, a song that a Halloween uh, song. Paula, was there um, some other things that you or D other things that you guys had in mind? I know those were the three specific things that you guys wanted to cover. If I could interject real quick, Chris's um, video for questions is at forty-four point eight right now, and because of the release of um, High. Um, the, Hi, what's Chris's new video called? Hi, what? High end. High end. High end. Because of high end, it seems like questions, video views are going up too. So it looks yeah. like he's going to hit forty-five million probably within the next two. Hours. No, it actually, it actually slowed down. <laughs> oh, I thought it was going up. Well, we'll see what happens. No. He, he not from it. yesterday. Not from yesterday. It slowed down a little bit, but it's still, you know. Oh. Okay. He's about to hit 45 million today. And we're supposed to be 45 already. <laughs> but because of high end, more people are, you know, watching it. Oh. So. Okay. Well, like I said, he's about to hit 45 million today. And if we can mm -hmm. get to a couple more million by Sunday, because Sunday is the closing time, right, um, Tammy? Is it Sunday or Monday that the close time? Monday. 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 Well, maybe get a couple and, more. And the question is also 60 million views. So I was reading yesterday, um, I think it was, I, I can't even remember, but it was um, about the RIAA and 
They were saying it's 150, 150 um, for a single, 150 streams, not 200. That's what I've seen on like a, a couple of the, oh. um, yeah, it's 150. So at 70 million, um, if you have like 70 million Spotify streams, then that's 500,000 right there. And Questions is already at 60 million Spotify streams. Wow. Yeah, so I believe that's 400 and, 400 and something. So that's just, um, so I believe um, questions, it should be like gold. Right. So so very close to it already. I think it's actually gold. Because if we get to 70 million, that's 500, 500K right there. Is the, is the count cumulative with video is or, or just the audio on Spotify? I'm, on Spotify? Um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. All right. What, what do you t- What do you mean the sixty million? Yeah, like it's a cumulative. Does, is it? Does it add? Do they add the numbers from Spotify with the video to determine the sales, or is it just the audio? Well, you know, this is what I'm confused about. On Spotify, on Spotify, is it just? Is, can you watch a video on Spotify? Because I'm not no, sure. No, it's all. No. It's all okay, all so videos. Spotify is just the audio, right? Right. Yeah. Yes, audio. Okay, so yeah, that's just the audio. It's not including any uh, streams from a video, unless you can watch a video on Spotify. No. But if you, you can't, no. then it's just um, it's just audio. So they don't oh. use the videos can streams for. Uh, counting towards the sales. Yeah, they do. They do. But when I said sixty million, I was just um. That's just from Spotify. I wasn't right. including any video. That's just okay. the sixty million Spotify streams. So it definitely has to be golden because the video. Yeah. Being over forty million, that's almost a hundred million total streams from both. From exactly. Both. Okay, I get it. Now. Okay. So. Looks like he's doing really well. At 45, it would be like uh, um, 200. Um, what is it? 45 million? No, we're 44. We're going on 45 million. So that would be uh, 240. But then, you know, of course, uh, there, there's international streams included in that, so we don't know how much the international streams or how many international streams are included in the um, 44 million uh, YouTube streams. But oh. you know, I mean, it's it's mostly U.S. streams. So I would say the majority of the 44 would be U.S. streams. We we just don't know how much, but um, even with that, and you calculate the um. The, um, um, Spotify streams, and that's not even included in set, um, the digital sales, and also the streams from Apple or Amazon, Tile, etc. So it definitely has to be gold already. So I have something else I would like to say. Okay. Go right ahead. I was hoping that Chris would, um, or RCA, would promote the um album because like you know like um a lot of times when i go on the uh, radio website i always see like a banner or some type of flyer you know probably like a small i don't know what you call it but um it's up there and it said it should say like you know chris brown heartbreak on the full moon october 31st Right. And also on Devo, you can see it. I think he did it with royalty. I don't know if it was the song or the album, but when you watch a YouTube video, you know the ads that come up? That can be like, you know, a promotion for the album because mm-hmm. some of the ads you can't just skip. <laughs> you have to actually watch the whole ad. That's, yeah, yeah, it's true. Like to, um, that's a great way to promote it because anybody who wants to watch a video, that ad, you know, the ones that you can't skip, you have to actually see it. And that's a great way because for your fans and people that aren't your fans, but probably like, you know, like your music and a lot of people that's been listening to all of your singles, 
you know, they don't know when your album is coming out. You know, only your fans that are on Twitter and IG every day now. So mm -hmm. even some of your fans, you know, that are working, busy, and they haven't been on IG for weeks, probably forgotten that your album is going to drop on the 31st. So uh, seeing it, uh, if you want to go on Apple Music and seeing it, or the search engines keeping you up there at the top. So if someone's going on Apple Music to, you know, look for a song to listen to, if you have that advertisement of October 31st, Heartbreak on the Full Moon, those are your fans that are like, oh, that's right, I forgot he is dropping an album. Or somebody is like, oh, Chris is dropping an album? Well, let me check that out. That's why he needs to promote on Apple, um, Amazon, the radio stations, like those little banners and flyers just to, you know, as a reminder to people or to let people know who's not on his IG or not on Twitter that his album is um, actually, you know, going to drop or it's pre-orders you can pre-order it or something like that or like you know um album drop in october the 31st you, but it's um available for pre-orders or something like that i think that's a great idea because um a lot of people have been listening to his music that probably aren't like you know team breezy or fans but they've been hearing them you know so they would be like want to check buy his album and check it, check it out the rest of the you know the songs Especially if it's like, you know, 45 other songs. So anybody who wants to, you know, go and purchase music, I believe they would rather purchase his because it's still at a, you know, a decent price of sixteen ninety nine, and you're getting 45 songs opposed to someone else where you're getting like a track of 14 or maybe, you know, 16 songs. But if, you know, if it's not there, then, you know, if you don't know it's for sale, then, you know, how can you buy it? Very true. Very, mm -hmm. very true. Well, listen, we, did see, more people uh, know. RCA, we did see RCA try to promote uh, Chris's album and Chris's new video on Twitter, and they got dragged for Phil, and rightly so. So they did try to do it 14 hours after the, the video dropped and after the pre order link dropped, and the fans went in on them. I, I sent Paula a copy of the. Um, <laughs> Of the post, but <laughs> absolutely right. They went, they went in. Like, Paula, show the, can you show the, I don't know if you guys can see it on your phone, but Paula, show the clip I sent you oh, where the first comment to our say they got dragged for Phil. But you're absolutely right. But it has to be other than Twitter. It has, it has to be other places where, you know, people I, go right. to. Like, Vivo is a great place. YouTube. Like, you know, as soon as you sign in, the radio stations. Right. Because the more people that know your album is for sale, more people will buy yeah, it. I if they don't know it's for sale, they can't yeah. buy it. I did see placement that I guess probably RCA had to do on Apple. I have a couple of screenshots of um, of uh, the placement of the pre-order for the album, and one was on iTunes. Mm -hmm. So I'll, I'll send that to Pollock because, you know, that's what we want to do is see what really is going on out there. Yeah. But... Um, yeah, they're getting dragged for filth and rightly so. Okay, I'll have here uh, up on my screen, um, RCA Records. Watch Chris Brown's official video for his new track, High End, pre order, whatever. And then below that, um, Uncensored 89 goes, You all should have been promoting him a long time ago. RCA, you're a bunch of jokers. Only care about certain artists. Shake my head. That's all, That's just one. But it's like, but she's got the right. I live there. I mean, you know, uh, some and of that, the that was the first. That was the first comment. <laughs> yeah, that's the wow. first comment that got twelve <laughs> likes. And wait, wait, but the second comment underneath that post said, "F you, RCA Records. No promo for Chris for Chris's album." Shaking my head. And that's the second one, and that got twenty-two <laughs> retweets and oh, thirty-seven God. likes. They went in. They went in. <laughs> they went in. And it's true, it's true. He puts out a single. Because I always see, I always see the other artists. I always see banners. And you know they're dropping a song. And that's the whole point. When people are coming on on the um, website for whatever reason, they can see it. Right. And then they'll buy it. But if they don't see that and they don't know, they can't buy it. They can't buy something they don't know is for sale. Exactly. Yeah, well, I feel right. like they do that a lot with him, though. You know, they kind of pick and choose when they want to promote. 
I feel like this is, even though we, you know, we just started our podcast this year, I still feel like that's an ongoing conversation yeah. <laughs> that Chris Brown fans, you know, have been having. Like, why won't they truly promote him? And then some people will say, well, they don't really promote anybody. It's like, mm. Not true. So, you know, you, you just you just never know with them. They're just not really predictable. So they promote you know, Justin that way. And they promote, uh, promote uh, Bryson Tiller like crazy. And I don't get it. I don't get it. Because he, cause he does way more, you know, brings in way more mm-hmm. than those other individuals. So... I'm not understanding that why why they act that way. But the only thing I can think is because he doesn't have a 360. But I mean that was their choice. Well, he never would have. <laughs> <on his 360. laughs> and if I was RCA, I would be keeping notes because how are you gonna let Title promote his new his new video mm-hmm. with with you know the full link to it and everything when Title's right. not even affiliated with Chris except right. he's gonna be performing you know on their stage next week. And supposedly, Title's supposed to be helping artists get more money for their deals. So RCA needs to kind of wake up a little bit because sure they got Chris and Chris brings them money. And sure they're trying to get up and coming artists like Bryson Tiller, but don't lose what you already have. Right. And know and know what I see a lot too um, on different uh, sites. Um, I don't know, maybe YouTube or wherever I am. Uh, a shade room, like you know how uh, they'll make a post, like if Chris um, and then older songs, like even G A um, G A G, um, or something uh, or privacy. I would say mostly G A G. I've seen it a lot. Like people are like song with the question mark. <laughs> song and i'm like you see that's because a lot of people didn't know that song was for sale they don't even know they never even heard the song so it's a lot of times you'll get people or whenever it's posted somewhere never like well what song was that i never heard that song before and that's because when you are selling with music or anything else when you're selling something the more people that know it's for sale the better the chances you will sell it you, you know what i'm saying so if people are saying, and it's a lot of times I've seen that, and it's more than like, you know, a couple of people, they'll be having a question mark, like song, song, like, you know, they're asking like, what's the name of the song? And that's because y'all don't market it. You have to market it. Like you would, he would have so much more sales if, if he did, because a lot of those, a lot of times they give you, they let you preview the song too, right? Like before you purchase it, it's, I, I guess it's like a, a little preview of what the song sounds like. I do. Cause I know, um, yeah, they, they, um, it, it said that, um, you can preview the album before I purchased it on Amazon. So, you know, I didn't, I didn't preview it cause I already know, you know, pretty much the, uh, mm-hmm. the singles. But, you know, if someone that didn't know, at least you can preview it. So I, I believe it's probably the same thing with the single. Like, you want to preview because they do, you know, have clips of it. And, but, you know, that's because it's not marketed enough. He would do way more better in sales if he was. Because everybody knows pretty much who Chris Brown is. You know what I'm saying? So his name mm-hmm. actually, okay, that's Chris Brown. But, oh, he has a new song out or he has an album coming out. People will probably, if, if, if anything, will preview it to see it. And if you preview it and you like it, then you most likely you'll buy it. Right. Yeah. And that's, I think that's like a, a, a the biggest issue. It's, it's not marketed enough for enough people to see. Because now grass is greener to us is uh, old, but people are still song like they never even heard it <laughs> they didn't even know on the internet you yeah. wouldn't know because a lot of these people they, there's lots of people who do not right. on the internet and that can't be the only place you advertise I don't know whatever happened to radio ads I don't know yeah the, the, yeah the radio can um do that too like but you have to you have to spend money on marketing and advertising like Taylor Swift when um her song was about to drop when Chris dropped questions and she dropped hers a couple of days after. I seen her everywhere. And that's why her sales did really good because 
but everybody knows who Taylor Swift is. Oh, she has a song coming up. But I seen her everywhere. Every, every radio show, I seen that band of Taylor, Taylor Swift, the name of that song, such and such day. You know, and that's what he has to do. Because if he does that with this album, it's going to be really, really crazy. If he market this album correctly, it's going to be really, really big numbers. But he, you have to market it. Because not everybody is on your IG and Twitter or... Or... um other internet, you know, um, sites mm-hmm. and stuff. That's why you know his performances, you know? Yeah, they have to balance that out more. Yeah. Definitely agree. And they're, and they're selling him short because they're not really promoting him the way they should be. And then selling themselves short because they benefit, you know, from his success too. So... Mm-hmm. I don't really, I don't really know what that's about, but they need to get on, on ball. And I think you've given awesome suggestions <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> enough to be able to do that effectively. I did see that um, Apple Music posted something, and I'm going to try and see if I can repost it this weekend. That said that if you um, get their streaming service, you can instantly create a 40 song playlist, and that's. If you take away the songs that Chris already has released, which is five, that's the rest of the album, which is 40. So I'm going to try and see if I can put something together to suggest to people who have Apple Music to go, go ahead and make his album, that playlist through the link that Apple Music put out. And I'll send, send mm-hmm. you guys a copy of it in the DM so you guys can look at it as well. Okay. Well, as we're getting ready for Tidal, I and mean, we're looking at um, what's in, in Puerto Rico and our president's treatment of... Puerto Rico saying, oh, we can't keep everybody there as if they're not, he's not going to walk away and not, not have FEMA take care of them as if they're not, you know, our right. responsibility. That's pretty disturbing. Wow. It's just, um, well, it just goes to, to show pretty much more, um, more, more like what he's been doing and, um, <clears throat> you know, his, um, supremacist, um, views. You know, and the people that he hired um, in his, um, to um, run his administration, you know, it's just more more of the same. You know, he's, um, I mean, it's just the same, same thing that they've been saying over and over again. I just don't see why it's so hard to, you know, impeach him, honestly. I mean, how much does he have to do? They, there, there have been some grounds, definitely some grounds for uh, impeachment, but not even, not even things like that. Just um, in terms of legal, illegal things that he's done and questionable things that he's done. Let's, oh, let's, let's keep it on, let's keep it on Puerto Rico, though, Paula. Let's keep yeah, it on that. Okay, okay. Okay. Well, um, in terms of Puerto Rico, they're not getting any help. They still, there was no electricity. Um, a few people have. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I've picked it, kicked in their private money, but he's saying FEMA doesn't have to do when when FEMA is definitely supposed to to help them, like definitely. I I just don't under I just don't understand where he like how he comes up with the things that he comes up with to even to even say that, and I just you know I just pull it back to. They, you know, if, 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 if it was Texas or somewhere else where the people looked a little bit differently, he would have different feelings and cause it, because it's so blatant. It's, it's so blatant. There's no reason why they're not, they shouldn't be getting the help that they deserve to have. I've never seen a president be so callous and just, uh, just, just such like, such a lack of compassion. Um, for others and, it, and, and it, it really is it's beyond insulting now um, to see you know celebrities doing more and saying in the actual government yes yes than, than he is and it's just like what more could he do to get him out of there you know and it's almost like he forgets that they're U.S. citizens. This is a territory that's part of the United States. I, I don't think and he understands that. that. 
Yeah. I don't, well, yeah, I think people do forget that in general, but I don't think he understands that. And just to, we'll keep with, quickly with the theme of the islands in general, the dummy went to the Virgin Islands, right? And not, not realizing that he's over them too. <laughs> There was some stupid comment he made, and I'll have to find it online. And it was like, no, no. I think he said something about, I'll talk to who's in charge. It's like, no, you're in charge of them. It's new. Those are the U.S. Virgin Islands. You know, he's just, he's just, you know, but that's what happens when you pick someone who's not qualified in any capacity to, to do a job. I, I just don't know what people were expecting. You know. He should, he should have never been put in. But what I am enjoying seeing um, is people rally together just in general to try to do what the government won't do. Mm-hmm. So I know tonight tonight they've got that concert and telethon. Um, and it's several, you know, um, several stars. And obviously there's a strong concentration of uh, Latino and Latina artists that are going to be involved in that too but it's some pretty big headliners so i'm happy to see that that's going on as well you know because they need that i can't i can't imagine what that would be like to be without power for days without food for days without water you know a six to, uh, for days it's good that um you know the, the title event's going to be good that's that's one of the places that they're uh uh, targeting for their funds so that's a good thing and and um, mm-hmm. I know that yeah. people you know actually sent planes to get cancer patients out because they didn't have generators at the hospitals and somebody else like mm-hmm. J-Lo donated generators for some of the hospitals it's just a matter of getting the the equipment to them you know because you know they're mm-hmm. the air force and that kind of thing but yeah it's yeah, it's, it's taking private people. It's, it's good that we're banding together, that people are banding together, as you say, because you, we can't depend on the government. We know that now. We can't depend on No, them. and you need, you need that. You need to, you know, you need to band together and you need to, you know, have that humanity still in place. Right. You know, you, you have to see that, especially in these times, just in general, you, you just want to remember that, we, you know, as a people love and care about each other and we want to support in whatever way that is, you know, in whatever way we can gen- genuinely give positive support. So even if it's just awareness, you know, however we can help and support, that's, that's awesome to see. So, yeah, I, I think the Puerto Rico and, and Trump's behavior, you know, like Paula said, that the, the fundraiser benefit happening next week, it's just, it's timely and it's also exactly. embarrassing. You know, it's so embarrassing to America to see, you know, our leader just ignore our citizens, not just in Puerto Rico, but in the Caribbean period. You know, like you guys said, the Virgin mm-hmm. Islands is part of the United States and he just acts like it's a separate part of the, of the world. No? Because, the because how they entered, how they became a part of the United States. That's why. No, I think like he, doesn't he just doesn't them. know. He just, just doesn't know. <laughs> <laughs> But, but you know, he knows. He knows because though. somebody in his administration will tell him yeah. if he didn't know. He knows. He just, you know, don't consider them like ordinary Americans because the way they became a part of the uh, union. So, <clears throat> but, um, and who they are, you know. Right. So that's not like Florida, United States, you know, that's totally I, I, different. I, I, yeah. I think it's more or less it's just a, a, a and that's like, what he said exactly. It's not like it's that's like Florida. That's point. exactly what he said. That's exactly <laughs> what he said. This is an island of brown people, you know, very shades. Just it's the island of minorities, and he and that's really what it is, you know. He's been bad. So. We thought yeah. we thought that that. Uh, the George Bush, the, the younger George Bush, was the most the dumbest we were going to get, but we didn't know that it was going to get worse. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, you might want to give him a little bit more credit now, I guess. Yeah, huh? yeah. I mean, he looks—he <laughs> he at least showed some compassion at times. I mean, my God, you know when he. But you know what? The difference is, 
George Bush was, Bush was really not a bad guy. He really wasn't a bad no. He wasn't. He just he was, uh, he just didn't know what the hell he was doing. <laughs> and it was Dick Cheney who was really the bad man right. and knew exactly what he was doing. Right. So, yeah. And George Bush was hilarious. Like, and that's why yeah. people elected him twice yeah. because because <laughs> he yeah. was like a regular person. Like, you know, right. he'd get up and make a fool of himself over and over again. I mm-hmm. mean, um, uh, who is it? The rapper? What's his name? That has with Colt and George. Yeah, I'm thinking of that. J. Cole. J. Cole. J. Cole. Yes. Yeah. I love that quote. What is it? I think it's from Tennessee. Shame on me. Yeah, I love that quote. <laughs> <laughs> and he must, he swapped that. <laughs> that quote. And he, he, does it, he used to do it all the time. And that's what made Americans really like him because he, you know, he seemed like a regular guy. Yeah. So you know, but it, it's a difference yeah. with Donald Trump and George Bush. Like, George Bush wasn't a bad guy. Right. Donald Trump is like a bad guy. Like, he has wrong yeah. and bad intentions. And, you yeah. know, and he doesn't know what the hell he's doing. So that, you know, we have like the worst on worst with him. Yeah, it's just yeah. like it's, it's somebody who you know lied on their resume and then get the job. It's like, oh, oh, so I, now I have and to a bad away. person at that, and not right. a good person at that. Right. right. Well, that well, it's like one is one is incompetent and the other is evil. Yes, I think that's exactly. the thing. right. That's it. Right. Yeah. Right. And I, yeah, um, I the think other one is incompetent it. and evil. <laughs> <laughs> so that was, I think he just only cares about himself. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I think think that's really what it is. He just only cares about himself, and he's just not able to really put himself in someone else's shoes and meditate there and think about what that would feel like. He's just not able to do that. Anybody, you know, who is different than him or makes a different choice is a loser. You know, like like that to him. Like he said that, you know, so many times. So he's just not in tune with anybody other than him you know as i think with the book um and he's racist but you know with a lot of other people they you know maybe they're making dumb decisions they just don't you know they just don't know or they have bad advisors <laughs> you know you can attribute it to other things but they're still likable like like tammy was saying you know towards the end of uh bush's term you know he's an Af- um on the continent of africa i forget which particular place but he's jigging down with the native you, did you see that you know he's shimmying and he's doing all kind of stuff because he's a regular you know, he's a regular person he just didn't have that knowledge and i think with trump like i said he doesn't care he was taking advantage yeah. of <laughs> yeah yeah right, right, right. 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 right right because he right, didn't right, have hilarious. the knowledge right but Trump doesn't want the knowledge. He's very much a what about me? He's on Twitter. I've, I've oh God, he's always on Twitter, and I, I've never seen that, you know, to that degree. And he oh he wants you to like him. He wants you to like him. And then I think the other thing that bothers him is before he became president, most celebrities, including the hip hop community, liked him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now they don't. Well, he was like, you know, a role model. He was Trump Plaza the whole time. Right. Right. But, but then when he got, yeah, exactly, Tammy. Go ahead. Yeah. They saw the real yeah, but they then, like... No. Yeah, because then now they see the real Trump, and this guy wasn't nothing like, you know, because people just see some times what you've done which you you know oh he owns these hotels so he's like you know right. a, a role model for some people that you know are looking to yeah. Yeah. you know build a career and have you know a career in buildings and hotels and stuff like that and probably um stayed in his hotels you know but now you see who the real trump is and this guy is nothing of what you thought he was and then he was also like, you know, a, um, a character because, you know, he had his, that show and people like that show, uh, whatever it was called, the show. And he'd be like, you're fired. Like, he's yeah. like really yeah. a character. Yeah, the Apprentice. The Apprentice. Yeah. yeah. The Apprentice. Right. And um, so he was also like a character and people liked the show and liked him from that. Oh, um, you know, um, on top of the Trump pleasures and stuff like that. And now he's really a jerk. 
he's really a jerk. Like the things mm-hmm. he says is unnecessary. It, it's just ridiculous. I'm coming mm-hmm. from an American president at that. Mm-hmm. Like it just mm-hmm. makes absolutely, it's an embarrass. he's an embarrassment actually. But he's also made it comfortable for other people to be able to openly show their show their behinds. You know, you have people who are just cutting up, you know, and being yeah. just disgusting human beings. And they always were. But, you know, it was unacceptable. Right. You know, so they were right. kind of living, living, they would do that behind the scenes. But now they're openly doing this this. The things that they're doing, they're saying the things that they're saying, and they're not really getting the consequences that they should be getting, and so it's just horrible. It's just horrible, and it's you know. But all of that to say, he's a jerk, and he's brought out the other jerk. <laughs> and then all of this, uh, yeah. he was doing uh, with Russia during the election, oh, yeah. the interfering in the um, in an American election. I don't know how he's still in office. I really don't because had, they uh, impeached a uh, Bill Clinton. So what they tried? You know, it was at right? the end of they the term. They tried to. They tried. And how? No, they did that? impeach him. They did. He was impeached, but it was just at the end of his term. Very at the very end. Yes. I mean, Obama. They would have loved to. You know, they would have definitely got things started. That's why. You, I don't know what's going on with the Democrats. Like, they talk a lot, but where is, why don't they do something? Like, get it started. If it was the Republicans, and it was the other way around, if it was a Democrat, Trump was a Democrat, there's no way in the world we wouldn't be doing um, impeachment um, or hearings at this point in time. After all he's done, all of the... Uh, supremacist, white supremacist um, people that he's hired down from his generals um, to his advisors. You know, like, come on, it's like ridiculous. And you're, and then the uh, Russian interference with um, Putin. I mean, it's, it's, it's unbelievable. I can't believe that we don't, we're not, you know, at this stage and day and time, we're not doing impeachment hearings or trying to. Well, you know what my uncle said when I asked him about that Tammy he said well if they do that then we still have tents so (laughs) I agree with you but you still have you know the other idiot who who left he left a a game because the flag was disrespected or whatever and we won't even go down that that loophole but you know we'll still have tents and he can get he can be impeached as well and, um, if he, and if he learned anything from Trump, then he'll know not to go down that route. And that's the whole idea, but we need, um, Democrats need to do something. They need to get something started because, I mean, letting, you know, Puerto Rico just sit there and you're not responding. You haven't, you know, you won't, um, did he, uh, uh sign for, um, FEMA or anything, any federal aid to them at all? I, I, I do, it was do very limited. Know? Yeah. 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 So, so he did. Know. Though he didn't. He didn't allow them to get instant um, EBT or food staff benefits. Usually, in, in a situation in the United States when you have a disaster, they instantly put on five hundred dollars of um, food stamps for people who have food stamp recipients because it's considered an emergency situation for them because they're already having financial problems. And he How denied that to the food stamps when there's so much damage. Well, he denied that to them because it, the food stamps also gives them money for food. Well, you know, money for food, but it also gives them a cash benefit as well. And um, he denied that to them. And I don't know if he still has denied it or he finally released it. But it's been how many how many weeks has it been since the hurricane devastated Puerto Rico? Like two weeks, three weeks, perhaps. Oh, I think it's been at least three. Yeah, and he's maybe just recently allowed them to get um, food benefits and cash benefits because part of the That's problem crazy. in Puerto Rico was that the, they ran out of didn't have any electricity, so the banks couldn't operate, and that's where cash became an issue for them. So he just that's care. crazy. Yeah, he doesn't. He, absolutely, he doesn't care. 
So he said it. It's not like it's Florida. That's what he said. That's <laughs> it's like really sad. <laughs> it's very sad. It's very, it's very sad. sad. And coming from an American president, that said, um, uh, like the um, majority of things he says and does is like really outrageous. Like, you know, mm-hmm. really? Uh, that's why I said he's an embarrassment. Because you you're a world know. leader. The world is looking at you and your leadership. And this is how you see. Obama did a lot. He did a whole he did. lot. And people he don't did so a lot of lot. things I, that he doesn't even get credit for that Americans don't even know. It don't You would only know if you was in that situation. But he passed and did a whole lot. And when he came in, the way George Bush and Dick Cheney left it, we were about to have a a, 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 a crisis, a financial crisis yes. here. You know, and he turned that around and started building again, and now we got Trump, and I don't know anything he has done, and it's it what, since he's been in office, like, but caused a lot of problems. Hey. Not yet, he has not contributed a single thing, and and um, if, if, if all he had done, but he saved people's homes, you know, he saved mine with the um, loan modifications. I don't know if you, right. if anybody right. else had to do yeah. that, because I was one of the people downsized and it's like yeah loan that alone if he had done nothing else that was a lot save to save people's homes yeah because people the foreclosure um the foreclosure crisis right. is what part of what made you know what w- was part of the problem of why we were going into a financial crisis because of them um, all of the balloon loans, all of these yes. loans, you know, selling, you know, because I re- I know because people, I'm telling you, I used to sell houses and people used to, <laughs> they didn't have to have uh, no credit. Right. No, they had the only thing you had to have was good credit. You didn't have to have no money down. You didn't have to have no, you didn't even have to have a job. All you had needed was good credit and you was qualified for a loan. And that's what happened. You, and at the time, the um, property values were really high. So, mm-hmm. yeah. and there was a lot of fraud going on because yes, I was. started doing the um, I started doing the uh, foreclosures. But when I started doing the foreclosures, it wasn't uh, it wasn't popular. Like the banks didn't have departments for it, so it was really stressful for me <clears throat> because they wasn't set up for that. You know, they didn't have departments to do that. So I was trying to get short sales through. And there was a lot of fraud. You walk I used to walk into a house when you, when I go to do a um it was like a REO. I walk into the house, you will look straight up to the sky. They were like shells. But the bank didn't know that. The th- bank thought it was a, a you know, a regular house and I'm right. arguing with them, this is a shell. That house sold for seven hundred thousand dollars. Wow. Because they showed the bank other pictures of another house saying it was that house and it was not that um, so when i go out there with the reo and i'm like this is the house it was just a hot mess it was a mess here wow. but those even houses that needed um renovation not really probably that bad some were but some wasn't that bad they were selling for top dollar so now you spend all of this money buying this house do you have a high mortgage you know, uh, on the seven, six hundred, seven hundred thousand dollar, then they start giving you balloon mortgages, all these kind of crazy mortgages they giving you that you know the consumers had no idea. And you get to this house now, you can't rent it because your house needs work. And then people were doing cash under the table, like you know, if I if I meet a, a lot of investors and here they come, they'll buy a house that was like. Uh, the owner was selling for three hundred thousand, but they knew because this lady owned this house for so many years, it had a lot of equity in it, and they can look at the uh, rates of the other houses selling in the area, and they were selling for like five, six hundred. So what they'll do is they'll buy it from her at three, and they'll flip it and sell it for six, and that cash they'll get under the they'll get under the table. You see, they was doing all kinds of crazy stuff. All kinds. Of, they were getting cash at closings. 
which is yes. un- ridiculous. That's illegal. <laughs> the buyer was getting cash at close. Um, the buyer was getting right. cash at close. It's normally the seller, right? Right. Yeah, I was just going to say, cause there's cash at closing, but yeah, that's definitely legal stuff. Jeez. That was a crazy wow. time, but but um, he has saved a lot of homes in the in the whole uh, bankruptcy mess. They he he, and then the thing with the really the healthcare alone, because the pre, getting rid of the pre existing condition was the first thing. I had two cancer patients who were kicked out for our insurance. I, I was at a big company in, in D.C., a big think tank, and I had two two patients. Who were who, uh, two employees who were kicked off of the health fund? They used to administer uh, benefits, and when they got kicked off the health fund because they hit a million dollars for cancer because they were cancer patients. Cancer patients hit a million in, in, in a matter in less than a year. Doesn't even take a year to get to a million. Their 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 treatment is so expensive. And what he and, and then after the after he passed the. That was the preliminary uh, in 2010. Preliminary um, uh, Affordable Health Care Act. It got rid of pre-existing conditions and um, also uh, the million-dollar cutoff. And so one patient, one patient died before, and the other one was able to get back on. But that's, I mean, that's just the reality. He really did do quite a bit. He did do quite a bit. Well, we're at, we're at the two hour mark here. So we, I was just yeah. going to cut you off. <laughs> I was looking. I was looking. I was like, mm, this one, it's one now. <laughs> yes, we are at the two, the two, the two hour mark. Well, thank you, you guys, for letting me be on. Finally, at time that I can be on for the whole thing. This will be a very short podcast is what I call a, a palatable length because uh, yeah last week was I was very hard getting it down to an hour I had to lose a lot of good good talk but you know we, we just can't we can't people aren't can't, gonna sit for two hours they're just not so you know so well, okay. we're, we're going by the direct feedback we got from Chris's camp where they All said right. oh they love our podcast but it was too long so we we're yeah. like oh, okay we could take feedback <laughs> <laughs> yep yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, get to the point. Get straight to the point, right? The thing is, right. there are podcasts that are even longer that are very, very popular, but they're pure gossip. That's what people, you know, that's what they want, and that's not what we are. That's not who we are. So, no. I mean, we gossip. But okay. We, we, we don't publish it. <laughs> yeah, we gossip and publish. <laughs> We don't have nothing to talk about this time because we're all happy with everything yes. that's going on this week. Yes. So, oh, you know, no, one, thing, one right. thing I forgot about. Did you did you see uh, Chris and JD uh, last night? Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I woke up at 4 That was morning. so cool. They were roller skating. Yeah. I was surprised to see JD. I'm like, what the hell? We know how to roller skate. <laughs> he was getting down on those skates. He was. He was. Wasn't he? <laughs> They were I was like, wow, well, okay, okay. <laughs> yes, yeah, so I got that little video, but cause I woke, I woke, not woke up. I was up all night trying to do videos. My, I'm having computer trouble and and internet trouble, so everything took ten times longer than normal. So that's why I was up until mm-hmm. four in the morning, and I that's when I saw it and and posted the video uh, in the middle of the night. <laughs> so, like, so I got to see them out there while they were still out dancing, like or not long after they they were out there skating. So. It looks like a fun ring. I my my client keeps calling me all of a sudden. Oh, okay. So I am okay. going to dash. Okay. It was great talking to you guys. All right, I'll catch you Bye, next Nikki. time. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Okay. Bye bye. All right. Bye bye. So and thank you, Tammy. We're we're gonna sign Thank off. you. All right. See you next time. Okay. Bye bye. Bye bye. Okay. Have a great weekend. Have a great weekend. Have a good you weekend. too. Okay. Bye bye. Thanks for joining us on this episode, and we hope you'll join us again at The Vanguard.